Capture One just released a massive update. Capture One 16.4. Not only do we see the standard level of improvements we come to expect from major releases, but we also have the introduction of new features in a completely new product version called Capture One Studio. I'm gonna show you some of the new features in Capture One Pro, talk about the new studio version features, and give you my take on some of these new tools and how they can improve your workflow. Before I begin, I wanna clarify that this is a new dot level release. We're moving from 16.3 point whatever to 16.4. If you have a perpetual license for 16.3 or below, you're not entitled to these updates, which is why I always recommend the subscription model so you're always up to date on the latest features, camera support, and bug fixes. This isn't a sponsored video. I just really love Capture One, and if you look at Capture One's pace of improvements and development since they switched to the subscription model. It's incredible. We likely wouldn't have these AI features without it. It's the most important company for my business, even more important than uh, Adobe you know, with Photoshop or Sprout Studio with my CRM or whatever brand of camera I happen to own. Capture One is just that critical to my business. And if or whenever you decide to shut down your business or stop updating Capture One and want to switch to a perpetual license, they have an amazing loyalty program that I've just never seen with any other company in the photography industry. It's good business. If that's something that you need, then take a look into that. So with that said, let's dig into this release. The first big announcement was the creation of a new product line called Capture One Studio. So now we have Capture One Pro and Capture One Studio, as well as the existing cultural heritage version, which is primarily used in settings such as museums for documenting cultural artifacts. This product line split mimics that of DaVinci Resolve, the video editing, VFX, and color grading software used by much of Hollywood, and which I use for editing these videos. DaVinci Resolve has a regular version for people like me, and a studio version with more advanced features features that are more useful in a professional editing studio where the software is being used all day, hence the name. The new studio version of Capture One has features that I feel would be very useful to a professional editing studio that's shooting e-commerce all day. In fact, they've made improvements and added features specifically for this use case, which is exactly why this new studio version exists. Now, before I get into the weeds of this release, I wanna say that this channel exists because of people like you, so please, take a quick moment to click the like button. Also consider subscribing so I can continue to make more videos for you. I'm trying to get to 10,000 subscribers and you can make a difference simply by subscribing to this channel. I'd really appreciate it. All right, let's start with tethering since this is why Capture One was created and where it outshines all other software. For tethering, Capture One has made improvements for Fujifilm and Sony users. For Fujifilm users, you'll notice Live View is now significantly smoother and higher quality, and you also now have dual control of the camera, meaning you can control it both from within Capture One and the camera itself. Sony users can now use menus instead of steppers to change camera settings, so no more clicking plus or minus to make incremental changes to your settings. Sony users can now change all of these settings from the camera settings tool within Capture One. Now this change affects many Sony cameras from 2020 onward. And finally, Canon, Sony, and Nikon users now have some additional options for file saving during tethering. You can send your raw files to the computer and your memory cards, or only send the JPEGs to the computer for faster tethering. There are a number of preset combinations in the camera tool, but you can also customize your options in the camera settings tool. If you've been a Capture One user for a while, the first thing you'll want to hear about is the new automatic updates. No more alerts that a new version available and then having to go to the website, log in, download the new version, save it, install it, and then delete the install file. Now Capture One will give you an alert and you can start downloading the new version within the app with a single click. People have been asking for this for quite some time and now it's here. You can now access adjustment settings from an icon in the toolbar across the top of Capture One. You don't have to click the tool tab to find it, just one click and you have a floating version of the adjustment settings. If you don't have the icon on your toolbar, you can add it by right clicking on the toolbar, select customize, and then drag the icon labeled copy and apply adjustments to a blank space on the toolbar. The AI masking features in Capture One keep getting better and better, and with this version, they've gotten faster, a lot faster. This is gonna save a lot of time for people like me who need a consistent background across multiple images. Now I can create my background, make the changes, and then copy that layer across a selection of multiple 
images. Because Capture One uses AI to regenerate the background mask on each image, doing this across dozens of images is now a lot faster. Subject and background masking is now up to four times faster, and the AI Select Tool performance is up to 18 times faster. macOS users will see noticeable improvements for batch file renaming and file management within sessions. Batch renaming files, moving files between systems folders, and deleting files have all gotten three to four times faster, and moving files to the selects folder is now up to 12 times faster. The best new feature by far is AI crop, and while this feature is awesome, I'm a little perplexed about its odd and fractured implementation. In Capture One Studio, AI Crop is its own tool in its own tool panel with three tabs, subject, face, and auto. In Capture One Pro, you're essentially getting just the auto implementation and trusting Capture One to correctly detect the subject and apply the crop accordingly. In the Studio version, you can refine your selections to a subject, to a face, or to just trust it on auto. In the subject tab, you have an amazing selection of variables for aspect ratio, constraints, margins, and alignments. These are incredibly useful when shooting products for e-commerce where there's a requirement for consistency across all images of a product. When you photograph a bottle, um, then turn it, but the placement isn't the same, you can select a reference image and then AI crop can apply that crop intelligently across a whole array of images or to subsequent images while you are tethering. So everything is the same size from image to image. If you're photographing clothing on models and you want all the models crop to be the same space and have the same margins, AI crop can handle that as well. This feature is absolutely amazing. In the face tab, you have the aspect ratio, show detected faces, and the set reference and apply reference button. The auto tab contains aspect ratio and the set and apply reference buttons, but I'm going to circle back to that in a minute. In Capture One Pro, AI crop exists in the crop tool. Capture One simply added the set as reference and apply reference buttons to the crop tool panel. The two problems I have with this implementation are that, firstly, we can't see the reference crop, so we have no idea what crop is being referenced on which image. A workaround for this would be to select an image as a compare variant and then set it as a reference for AI crop. That way, when you're using the AI to apply subsequent crops, you know what image it's basing its decisions on. But a rule of thumb in UX and UI design is that if someone has to develop a workaround, there's a problem with the initial implementation. So I hope we see some improvement on that in future releases. Secondly, there's that checkbox in the face tab, show detected faces. The only difference between the auto implementation in the pro version and the face tab implementation in the studio version is this single checkbox. I don't understand this choice to cripple this feature in the pro version when it really doesn't offer any significant value to a studio only version. Now, the auto settings do also apply to subjects that are not just faces. So it would make sense that it show detected faces isn't necessarily in the auto tab. It would be extremely useful for people to be able to see if Capture One can see the faces or not in an image, or if it does detect a face in auto, seeing which face or faces it is detecting. Also, while I was testing this feature, there were times when Capture One just posted a notice saying no face detected, even though it's a clear and sharp image of only a person's head and face. Not being able to detect a face there is problematic. If I can't see what Capture One is seeing, I can't trust what Capture One is seeing, and I can't trust the tool will work consistently. If I can't trust the tool will function properly, that erodes my trust in the product as a whole. And as I said at the top of this video, Capture One is the single most important piece of software that I use in my business. I need to be able to trust it to work. So as I said, that one single checkbox does not scream studio only version to me. These next features, however, do. This release marks the debut of Capture One's studio version. Capture One Studio has all of the features of Capture One Pro, plus a number of new tools and additions, specifically designed to improve the production environment in a busy photography studio. I just discussed the AI Crop tool, which is its own tool panel in Capture One Studio, and probably worth the jump to the studio version on its own for people who would need that level of consistency and functionality. If you jumped ahead to this part of the video, jump back and watch that section for info on the AI Crop tool. Capture One Studio also has a free Live for Studio companion app for iOS, which allows allows people to view, rate, and tag images on an iPad without needing to access the internet provided the iPad and Capture One Studio are on the same local area network. 
This is great for location shoots where there's no internet connection, but you can set up a local Wi-Fi network. Your clients can sit comfortably in a video village and not have to crowd around a laptop, looking over a Digitech shoulders at a 13 inch laptop that's shrouded by a sunscreen. Capture One Studio also introduces multiple client viewers. If you have up to three additional monitors on set, each monitor can have its own viewer and each viewer can be assigned its own behavior. Client viewers can behave in one of three modes, pinning an image variant, displaying the currently selected primary variant, or displaying the last image captured during tethering. Pinning an image allows you to select an image and not have the image change until you assign a different image to that viewer. This is handy, for example, when you have selected a compare variant and want to have that image on the monitor and remain static and visible on the monitor. In previous versions of Capture One and in Capture One Pro, the standalone viewer will change based on the currently selected variant in the image browser. This behavior is still available in the client viewers as another mode for you to choose. The third mode shows the most recently taken image in a tether session. This will be incredibly handy for a photographer to see their captures as they are coming in, while the Digitech can see a currently selected image on a second monitor, and everyone can see the compare variant on a third monitor. Now, while I've kind of just been using the idea of like monitors and client viewers interchangeably, like you could set up all three client viewers on a single monitor and have them behaving independently of one another in their own modes. The studio version also introduces new metadata functionality such as new tokens for file naming. Keywords, metadata, and backup location in the next capture tool, and tool locks so you can set locks on tools that you want to make sure are not accidentally changed when working on a production. The last tool I want to talk about is the new guides tool. This is not to be confused confused with the grid tool. The guides tool is similar to the grid tool, but you can get much more specific with your guides and you're not stuck to a grid of equally sized cells. You can customize the color you assign to the guides and toggle whether or not guides should uh, stick to the image bounds or follow the crop. And you can also toggle to show the guides or hide the guides. Now, I don't know if there's a limit on how many guides you can set, but when I tested it just by repeated clicking the new guide icon, I was able to add 40 individual guides. All guides are independent of one another and uh, guides are completely independent of the grids. So you could have an image showing a grid, showing detected faces and showing multiple guides all at the same time. If you run a studio and you have a need for these features that are in the studio version, then you should absolutely update it. Photographing products with SKUs or UPCs, get the studio version, use the new tokens for file naming and adding metadata to organize your product file. Shooting high budget ad campaigns with multiple people on set, get the studio version. Otherwise, just stick with the pro version. That's what I'm doing. The studio version of Capture One is three times the price of the pro version and is only available as a subscription. For my business, I can't justify a 3x jump in the expenditure for the only feature I would really want that's currently studio only, and that's the show detected faces. So what that means for this channel is that I'm unlikely to update you on new features in the studio only version of Capture One since I'll not be moving over to the studio version. I had access to the studio features as a beta tester, but when we're beta testing these products, we're under an NDA and not allowed to show or discuss any new features, which you know, makes total sense. Things could change completely, and they have in the past from version to version. Also, unfortunately, Capture One doesn't work with creators. They don't let us know when updates are coming or give us advanced versions to work with and make videos to help inform you. So let me know in the comments which version of Capture One you're going to be using. Are you sticking with the pro version or are you upgrading to the studio version and why? Once you've done that, drop a like on this video, subscribe to this channel and do me the kindness of sharing this video or any of my videos with just one colleague who you think can benefit from it. Thanks for sticking around.